moving on, let's move into NCAA Rules Committee. Now, this one is interesting. I, um, you and I have seen this numerous times with teams that like to go a little up tempo. Once you got the offense rolling, you've got the defense set up in something that you know you can take advantage of. You try and snap the ball as quickly as possible. It, it was a, a fluky thing. It was a gimmick thing for a long time, and now the bigger teams are doing it as well. It, it's happening across the sport. Uh, uh, the majority of teams can go up tempo when they need to when they have found a defense that they can take advantage of. And then you see a guy on the defense that is uh, waving to the sideline, and then he just flops over, right? Oh, I got an injury. I got to come out. So it slows down the offense. You have time to substitute. You get somebody in there. Now, they did set up where you have to give the defense, you know, if you substitute, you got to give the defense 10 seconds to be able to substitute, et cetera, et cetera, right? Now, the AFCA, the American Federation of College Football Coaches, uh, or the uh, American Football Coaches Association, they want the NCAA to switch up the rules to look at the players that are faking an injury. If you are found to have faked an injury, because you see a lot of these kids go out for a play and then they come right back in, right? That's right. If that happens, and I mean, what many are they of them like hop up and run off the field as soon as the play clock has stopped. Yep, that's it, it's it's a problem. And they don't even hide it because why hide it? There's been no penalty, so why stop? Right, it? there's there's no reason to to even worry with it. But now, if they end up doing something about it, that is going to be kind of interesting. Uh, I don't know what they're going to end up doing. It said, uh, our ethics committee would suggest rule changes to the NCAA said by unanimous consent, this has got to stop. AFCA executive director Todd Berry said. So they asked the rules committee to do something about it. It's bad for football. He said, rules need to have teeth, and if there's no teeth, there's no impact. So, uh, Alex Scarborough from ESPN uh, said the AFCA Ethics Committee voted in January to request that the NCAA address players faking injuries. One big issue with changing any injury rule is that referees often can't say with any certainty if a player is feigning a problem on the spot during a game. The NCAA could, however, require a player who exits the field following an injury timeout to miss at least the remainder of a series unless a coach burns a timeout to keep the player in the game. The NCAA Rules Committee is expected to discuss the subject during a virtual meeting next month. I'm... Very curious. Uh, Steve Shaw, who is the NCAA Football Rules Committee chairman, uh, he said the committee is going to have heavy debate on the topic and see where that goes. What would you recommend? So I don't. I'm, I want to be clear. I don't like the guys just falling down to try to stop the other team. Okay, I don't. I don't like it. I'm not a fan of it. I equate it to flopping in the NBA and flopping in soccer, which I think is gross and just. I think it's very unsportsmanlike. I, I yes. almost am, this is going to sound stupid and I'm going to look like a Neanderthal. I, I'm more okay with cheap shots than this. And the reason I am is because cheap shots are at least two people competing as hard as they can. And one of them usually getting his butt whipped is so mad about getting his butt whipped that he hauls off and he hits somebody. Okay. Yeah. Like, like you're at least showing competitive fire and vigor and, and wanting to win. Okay. I, I'm okay with that. I don't like it. And I think it should be penalized, but I'm okay with it. All right. This I don't like, but here's my problem is I don't know how you legislate this That's because if a, if a guy legitimately like tweaks something like I, I, I'm a 38 year old man who's in probably the worst shape of anybody I know. Okay. But when I stand up, I have one knee, my right knee, it's tore every ligament in my leg out when I was 15 years old. Yeah. And so now when I stand up out of the chair, it pops. Okay. Every time, a hundred percent of the time for the rest of my life. And it's done this for 20 something years. All right. So here's the problem. Sometimes it pops and it nearly puts me to the floor. It hurts so bad. And in seconds, it's better. Yeah. Okay. I know. And you all have had some type of injury to where you did something, you pop something, you hurt something and it hurt to a point where you were in real legitimate pain. And then a few minutes go by and you just kind of work it out and then you're fine. And you go back to doing whatever you wanted to do. If you do this, you're now penalizing guys who legitimately do get hurt and need to come off and just kind of, work something out and okay, did I just tear this ACL or did I just pop my knee? And, and, you know, 
There you go. Well, Yeti, I don't know hey, how Brian to Yeti jumps it. in, by the way. He said, how can you prove that someone isn't hurt or cramping? He said, because I've cramped, and it's here, and then gone in seconds. And, the, and yeah. gone in seconds. Gone in seconds, man. So while I hate it, I really do hate it, I don't know how you legislate it. And if you say, well, you have to miss the rest of the series, listen, you're talking about college football, okay? Outside of Alabama, and even Alabama, no team has nothing but just five stars out there running around. They all, on defense especially, rotate multiple players, far more players rotated in on defense than offense could ever imagine. So at any point in time, you've got a guy on the field that if he had to sit out for eight plays or the rest of a series, it really wouldn't hurt you. And it's just that guy's job to go down whenever you give the signal. So now you didn't you you've you've created this this rule that's pretty easy to loophole. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Casey, and you're jumps asking in, the by referees the who are already uh, bad at the jobs they do. Yeah, they're because really they, hard jobs, and they're already bad at those jobs. You're asking them to try to do something else that's also really hard. Well, you're asking for a judgment call on injuries. You're also asking for judgment calls on targeting. You're asking for and and so. The targeting stuff, like, we all hate the fact that kids are having to sit out uh, or are being disqualified if they get caught doing helmet-to-helmet, even if it's the offensive player's fault, right? That's yeah. a, that's a bit of an issue, and they've tried to make it where, well, it's no longer a judgment call. It's just if it's helmet-to-helmet, then he's out. That's right. But we hate that. So we want them to make judgment yes. calls on the field. Is there intent? Is there not? And that's right. now you're also wanting them to figure out, like, hey, are they actually hurt? Or are they not? And then it becomes an even bigger thing. It's like, okay, why, if if we're going to do this, why do we not do it where they don't have to fake an injury? Why not just set it up where you can't go that fast in the sport? Like Nick Saban talked about this forever ago. and No, because it's not it. a like, safety issue as to why you can't go out. The reason the guy falls down is because the defense is getting their ass kicked. Right, but that's what I'm saying is – but like, just because you're getting your ass, get, don't say, well, the offenses are too good and the defenses suck, and so we got to we gotta change the rules to slow it down. I don't know that I like that. I don't See, know that I'm a fan of that. So Yeti said uh, maybe it's more a defensive issue. Maybe they can't come back until the timeout is called or until the chains are moved and maybe make that for all injuries. Um, I mean, maybe, like Casey said, if they can't walk off the field, they should be out for at least a quarter. And then he said uh, it, it's true. It would be an advantage to teams like Alabama – that's not always the case either because Alabama's defense uh, has not been great the last couple of seasons. And yeah. there are certain players that if they miss time for whatever reason, then that's going to be an issue. Yeah, we and heard him. Casey said, any injury, you're out for a quarter makes sense. If you can't walk off the field, uh, and he said uh, earlier, any injury, uh, they should be out for a quarter. But what if it's injured to the shoulder? What if it's injured to the arm? So you can run off. You got no problems, but your elbow hurts. He said uh, most of these come at the end of the second and fourth quarter. Uh, if if they fake an injury, they got to be out for the entire quarter. And I don't buy that. I, maybe here's the, the problem series. Is I, we don't like. We know now. We know now because the way they do it when they fake it when they don't. Yeah. But but in this situation, if you make a rule, they're just going to get better at acting. And now you're going to have half the people who are going to say, oh, man, that guy's really hurt when he's really not hurt at all. And the other half are going to say, half the time, you're going to say, oh, he's just faking it, that's bullshit, and something really legitimately could be wrong. So so this is the issue, and this is the problem. This is, this is a really hard thing. Now, the only thing I can think of is if you see a guy go down, okay, the, the team doctors have to have some type of documentation, all right? When they take you in the little bubble, okay, they raise the bubble over you, and they inspect you, and they examine you. They have to document what they examined, how they examined, what injury what injury you complained about, all this stuff. This needs to go to an official that is a doctor that the NCAA just hires as an official, okay? And after the fact, the only way, if you want to legislate this out, if you find a team doing it, you be, you begin to find the head coach. That's well, it. Hold you on. can't stop it on the game. You just find the head coach. Yeah, I guess that would. That'd He's be the guy the that way. makes the most amount of money, but it doesn't matter if he makes ten million dollars or if he makes four hundred thousand dollars. You find the head coach. Well, so here's the issue, though. It, it it's like you said, if they're faking an injury, they're not going into the bubble. They're they're not going into that uh, injury tent. They're just going to the sideline for a play, and then they come right back in. So somebody's got. Uh, all I'm telling you is it, we're. You're asking you're asking the officials to watch this and judge it. I don't think they can. 
I don't think they're going to be able to do that. So if somebody's going to make a judgment call, it needs to be another doctor that either watches it, sees it, they can see it after the game, they can watch what happens, they can interview the training staff about it, but that training staff's going to have to be able to answer questions two hours later when the game is over with about what happened in the third quarter or what happened in the first quarter where you pulled that guy out. Um, and so that, that, that that's on the team to make notes and, and all this stuff, and that's fine. It's okay, but it's, you can't punish them in the game. There's just no way to do it and do it well. If you want to punish teams, you hit these head coaches in the pockets. You just do. And there's the thing. That's a drop in the bucket. All these coaches, it won't, it won't stop them. Nick Saban will never pay one of those fines. Ed Orgeron will never pay one of those fines because the boosters will step up and pay it. They, they're already getting paid just disgusting amounts of money. But that's that's the only way that I, I would even be reasonable. To, to assess a penalty in the middle of a game, I'm not okay with. As yeah. much as I hate this happening, I don't trust that a, 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 an official's not going to do it and screw up a game. Damien jumped in. Does anybody watch wrestling? It's all entertainment. I don't see what everybody's really pissed off about. We all know it's all rigged. I mean, they don't call it entertainment for nothing. I don't think this part's rigged. But either way, Michael Curtis said, what's up, guys? Finally get to watch a live show. Glad that what you up, made Michael? it in. Glad you're here. Uh, Casey said, true, Damien. It really doesn't matter. Um that's that's the thing. I don't know. I don't know how you stop this because there are some legitimate injuries that happen. I can I can I, I can totally um, relate to people hating it and yes. wanting it out of the sport. You got to come up with a better way than saying a guy's got to sit out for two plays or three plays or a series or a court. Like because you can't make punishments that punitive either because you're still making a judgment call. What if it was? Oh, I popped my elbow. All right, it popped back. Holy shit! Oh, it's fine. I've literally thrown my shoulder out of socket when I played football, and I had somebody just jerk on it and it jerked it right back in. A trainer wasn't like another offensive lineman. Okay, yeah. somebody knew what he was doing, and I mean, it felt. I mean, it, I I was able to play without any pain or problems at all the rest of the game and had no long-term issues whatsoever that I've known about. So, so that happens. How do you say he was faking? You don't like it. You, you can't, uh, Brown Yeti said it's Pandora's box. It's open. There's no putting it back in. Uh, Casey said, if a guy's really hurt enough to not get off the field, they should be out of quarter. Well, that's yes, not, that's, I that, just that's gave different. you a scenario where that's not true. Yeah. That's a, it, it, that's a different ordeal that he's talking about like if a guy is actually hurt and it's like a severe thing then yeah he's gonna be well, out yeah, he's gonna like, he's gonna miss the game or the quarter anyway so it's it's trying to how figure many times out have guys like broken fingers and okay you broke my finger i'm just gonna go tape my hand up and, and then i'll be back out there in in you know 60 seconds yeah i mean that that happens all the time. It's, that it's happens all, but i can't stay on the field while that happens i have to come off the field yes yes you're right. 